In an interesting twist in Formula One, Mercedes have now captured two senior Ferrari team members to join their Formula One team. Ferrari's former chief designer Simone Resta and Enrique Sampo, Ferrari's driver simulator team leader. Hello, I'm Bryn Lucas and joining me to talk through this story in all its glory is John Noble. Now, John, it seems like pretty much every day we have a conversation, doesn't it? But as everyone's focusing in on the driver market, it seems like other teams, Mercedes, are looking slightly elsewhere. It's a, it's a great coup, isn't it, for Mercedes? Yeah, I think it, I think it shows it's not all one-way traffic. I think, you know, you look from the outside and Ferrari grabbed hold of Lewis Hamilton then there was talk about them looking after more engineers. This clause in Lewis's contract, the non-poaching agreement, that stops a lot of Lewis taking staff with him to Maranello. Then we heard that Jerome D'Ambrosio, um, who's kind of been one of Toto's kind of lieutenants at the team, some people even talked about him, you know, potential future team boss. He's leaving the team. Decided he didn't want to. Him and his family didn't want to stay in England. It wasn't working. They want to go back to Europe. But we understand he's on his way to Ferrari. So everything looked like it was a. Uh, a one-way street, but this is actually quite significant. It shows that Ferrari uh, isn't having everything, that Mercedes has done quite well. It's got especially Simone Resta, former uh, chief designer of the team, a you know long-serving Ferrari man, understands how that team works, what makes his car quick. Um, he'll be one of the two key figures coming across. Yeah, you mentioned Ambrosio. He was a former team principal before, wasn't he, in Formula E? So he was, as you say, probably earmarked by Toto. But what were these roles be once they take up their positions at Mercedes? So Rest is joining as Strategic Development Director. That's his official title. He's going to work kind of hand in hand with James Allison, Technical Director. Um, I guess just pushing on uh, with projects and with one eye to the future. We're in, we're in a phase of Formula One now where teams only have to concentrate on the this year's car and the development and how that rolls into 25. But 26 is looming fast. Teams can't start official aero work yet on the 26 cars, but they'll be thinking about it. They'll need to be planning. They need to get their resources right. They need to get everything sorted. And and in Simone Resta, James Allison's got some vast experience, understands how things works. Uh, most recently, has technical director is loaned out by Ferrari. So he, he's, he's you know, wise with how the, the stresses and strains and planning needed in Formula One. So he'll be a, a big boost to James Allison. And Enrico Sampo is joining as head of performance software applications. Um, he was basically head of, head of Ferrari's simulator project, and simulators are now, you know, key, key uh, kind of weapon in an armory of an F Formula One team. They need to get all their pre-weekend setups done, development on race weekends. You know, hear stories about Mercedes Mick Schumacher being a sim till three in the morning, churning through setups and developments and processes. Uh, so, absolutely critical to get that. Ferrari's got this Dynisma simulator, one of the you know best we hear in the in the world. So all that knowledge coming to Mercedes will be a big boost to them. Head of performance software applications is not the catchiest of titles, is it? <laughs> you know, I can think of slightly better ones. I'm not sure even if it cuts down to something quite amusing, but there we go. Now, when will these two be able to start on their roles? Because presumably they're not going to be able to leave before Australia or even maybe even this season, I'm guessing. No, F1, F1 loves a good bit of uh, kind of gardening leave. There's a lot of latency these times when um, things happen. So we, we see this often in Formula 1. Um, Ferrari last year signed Loic Serra, one of uh, Mercedes' performance directors. And Fred Vasseur said at the time that, you know, I've, I've signed this guy. This was 2023. He can't join to 25. And it, it'll be the same here. Um, both have agreed contracts will be joining Mercedes, um, but they're locked down to their current contracts this year. They'll be joining some point in 25, but as far as I understand it, no firm date yet sent. But I think Mercedes will be hoping it's January the 1st. Yeah, going to have to get their spades out, aren't they, and start enjoying the, <laughs> the outside for a bit. Now, they would have been headhunted for a reason. What will they both be bringing to Mercedes? I think it's the kind of expansion of ideas and understanding. Um, you know, teams... It's all about kind of understanding where Formula Ones are heading. There's small marginal differences in different organisations, and it's bringing all those ideas and information together just to work out, you know, are there areas that Mercedes can learn from Ferrari? Are there areas that you know Resta can come in and see that that needs to be done better? And I think Mercedes has been a team that's been very, very open to bringing people from outside and, and making the most of them. We saw it with Aldo Costa, you know, came from Ferrari. James Allison himself, ex Ferrari man. Um, came to Mercedes uh, so they'll aim, aim to make the most of them get the input 
um, and hopefully it'll all push things forward nicely for them. Yeah, there was a bit of confusion, I'm sure you can fill in the blanks here, when Simone Resta was recalled to Ferrari from Haas at the start of this year, back end of January. Is this now cleared up that confusion? I think so. It was quite a, quite a mystery because it was. The, I remember remember how the story panned out that we we had the announcement that Gunter Steiner was leaving as team principal in the morning, and then uh, we kind of knew knew it was coming, and then suddenly we also found that Resta had left as technical director. So it was all a bit mysterious. Ferrari was saying nothing, so we weren't sure if he was being pulled on to another project, was being pulled back to the F1 team. It all went silent, but I think uh, we've now found out what was really going on. It's nice when all the bits of the puzzle fall into place, isn't it? Now, it's not all a one-way street, though, is it? Because Ferrari have also been taking some staff from Mercedes, too. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, D'Ambrosio, um, we understand he's going to be heading up their Young Driver program. It's a project that he did at Mercedes. Uh, he came in, um, kind of understood how the team worked, was looking after... Um, helping with the young drivers. I've a lot of work that James Vowles had done in his previous role um, prior to him joining Williams. So, but as I said, his, uh, basically for personal reasons, he didn't, didn't want to stay in the UK, he wanted to go back to mainland Europe. Um, so he's been looking at opportunities and the Ferrari chance has, has come up and he'll, he'll be shifting there. But obviously, you know, the, the big, the big Mercedes staff man, if you want to call it that, that they got was Lewis Hamilton. Um, obviously a, a big, big, uh, move for Ferrari, big move for Lewis, um, and I think it's put a lot of a lot of the focus and spotlight on these two teams, especially with Toto Wolff and Fred Vasseur, you know, former flatmates in effect because they lived together in the UK for a little bit when when Fred came over to work for Renault. Um, so I think they're both. I think they've got a good balance between friendship and rivalry. But um, I think in Formula One, there's no love lost when it comes to getting hold of the best staff. Healthy rivalry. That's the good kind of way, is it? That's the good kind of rivalry. Now, very quickly, will this have a, a knock-on effect up and down the paddock with other senior members moving on? Is this is this silly season not concerning drivers? I don't know if it, don't know if there'll be a wider. I don't know if there'll be wider impact elsewhere. Um, I just think it's symptomatic of a team needing to kind of Mercedes itself. You want signs that things are moving forwards. You want signs that improvements are being made to, to push onwards. And let's not forget in the background, Mercedes is a double aim going forward with improving this car at the moment, that A, to get the results this season, but you know there remains a chance that Max Verstappen could be on the market at the end of this year. Um, but as Toto Wolff says, the only way they can attract someone like Max Verstappen is by giving them the best car. At the moment, Red Bull has the best car. So they want to push forwards. And if you're trying to convince Max that come on, we're getting things in place for the future. Everything's going to improve. We know what's happening. Then you've got, you know, Toto signed his new contract. James Allison signed his new contract. You've now got two senior Ferrari guys have come on board. And what it could do is, you know, lead to other people thinking, actually, this is a team that's moving places. We'll come there. And at the end of the day, if that opportunity does open up, if Max decides that Red Bull isn't a place for him, they would welcome with open arms. I'm sure they would. You know, I, I know somebody who's written a really nice article and in fact, a video has been produced as well all about Max moving away from Red Bull. Well, thanks very much, John. It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out when the music stops, isn't it? There's so many drivers who have got their contracts ending at the end of this season, so it's going to be a fascinating few months. And don't forget, you can catch up with all Formula One stories here on Autosport and other sports as well. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll keep you up to date.